Welcome to Roman on CVI. I'd like to talk a little bit today about the selection of objects used in phase one CVI. The most important factor is that we think about how that target object can be applied to future learning. If it only exists for the moment, then it's probably more of a sensory stimulation activity than actually one that will dovetail with future learning. So for example, if I determined that um, a child might visually attend in phase one to a bright red pom-pom, I have to be able to convince myself that I can use elements of that red pom-pom to adapt a toothbrush, to add a, a red mylar sleeve to a cup, that I can add, you know, parts of that mylar to indicate um, where a door handle is, whatever I think could th be functional and useful in phase two and so forth. So that's very important. Um, sometimes people pick objects that uh, um, also just kind of exist up here. They show it to the child next to eye level or at eye level. But the other principle I want to mention is that these objects should also ideally extend from the eye to the hand. So something like a slinky object, like the slinky toy, that can be seen with the eye, but also potentially touch the hand. And even with a reflexive movement, the child may begin to realize that this thing they're encountering with their hand is the same thing their eye sees. And that relationship then builds this concept and this and learning that ex it transcends the moment. So I think one of the most important principles is not only selecting the right thing, but making sure the, pr the properties of that target can ideally extend from the eye to the hand. Otherwise, I fear that children will just see a series of kind of disembodied objects that they don't even have a chance of being able to, um, to interact with while looking Again, it will be extraordinarily brief in phase one, but we, um, I think, again, our intention is learning. And so if we can have help this individual learn that this thing they're holding in their hand or somebody puts in their hand um, and that five seconds ago was something you showed me actually are the same thing. And the easiest way to do that is to make sure that the initial target extends from the eye to the hand. It can be a string of jingle bells. Of course, the child's going to look away when they make them ring, but they can see it and encounter it and know that they're, they're like one and the same. It can be, again, that slinky toy. It can be a long column of, of shiny mylar um, you know, material. It can be a series of bright orange balls that that you know extend from the eye to the hand again color will be important um, and our intention is the most important thing.